Hi, my name is Ghost, and for the past two, three days now, I have uh, been given the opportunity to try out the beta patch notes for the upcoming public environment, so on and so forth. So let me lower this down just a little bit more. Um, so I thought we'd go over the patch notes themselves, and then I was actually given the wonderful opportunity to actually kind of give like a quick little Q&A. Where's the... Oh, it's right here. Okay, sorry. There we go. Okay, so now I need to switch to here. Hey, look at that. There it is. So, um, yes, I was thinking uh, we'd go over this, and then I have a uh, kind of a Q&A thing that was sent to me, and then I'll kind of just be giving my, my, my final thoughts at the end, if you will, um, about just how I feel about the game um, after all of this has been discussed. So... Straight off the top, when entering an area, there is now a 0.8 second cooldown before being able to strike a hit. This will prevent tile dancing. This is true, it's nice, it's great. Um, the only thing that I have seen so far with this is um, it gives a massive defender's advantage because of the tower buff, which we will get to later in the video. But essentially, if you have 8 units in a warchief, and they have 8 units in a warchief, and they're all identical, if the person tries to attack onto your tile, there is a 0.8 second where you can deal as much damage as you want and it will not harm you. You can just do a giant swing and then just back up and let your, your uh, tower kite until you feel comfortable to engage on your own tile. So, for example, here's, here's the uh, attackers, here's the defenders. Attackers come in onto your tile, okay? So you do some initial damage on the original, you know, uh, border. Then you back up to where your tower is, you know, off to the edge of the tower, like a good pl tower placement. You engage them, you engage them, and now suddenly it's unprudent for them to attack. So now they also have to run out of the tower. There's uh, what feels like a very strong um, de defender's advantage, at least, to try and push into uh, an opponent's tile. I still think that the this is a great way to nuke the tile dancing, but um, I also see in at least in a multiplayer standpoint, if you have just straight up armies going at it, there uh, this could be very detrimental. You can now see every unit in a multiple unit selection with their individual life bar. Uh, this is something that actually I was using to cast when we were doing a 1v1 between the uh, Amazing Lenny and uh, Crazy Dentist Live, and it's really cool. It's actually very nice. Um, being able to have, you know, see how much HP your units have, being able to back them out, um, I, I like it a lot, honestly. This this isn't really so much a, a criticism video, it's more of like a, this is a, there's a lot of good stuff that this patch will be doing uh, for the game that um, I still think there's a few things that need to be uh, fixed, but it's, it's very, very good. Um, being able to see your unit's health bar across the board instead of just kind of trying to pick it out through a fight, it's very, very helpful. The only... Uh, downside that I see. This feels more like a cosmetic thing, um, especially when I'm dealing with an engagement where I'm trying to micro units or I'm kind of dealing with a whole bunch of things on the screen. I really don't have time to look down at the, the you know, the mini or the, the box, which would be right about here-ish to see, okay, this one warrior's low HP. Well, I can see that on the screen, but it's selecting that one warrior in that giant kerfluffle of an engagement. That's currently at least what feels to me the the biggest issue don't get me wrong the health bar is really nice and let me tell you as a person that can't wait for spectator mode to be enabled this is a great thing for casting because you can just see both sides their health bars it's it's beautiful in this group panel you can select all units from the same type by doing control and then click oh can i select there we go control click on one of the units i mean it's it's basic micro honestly um a lot of these, a lot of these patches and these uh, add-ons for the game have felt like they've really raised the uh, the skill ceiling. So instead of it just being, I build a warrior camp, I get my six Vikings, and I go and I just I basically roll over my opponent. It feels like now there's an economy game to it, and there's also a combat system that is still getting worked on. When fighting, the military units now have uh, circle color circles beneath them to increase fight clarity. Uh, yes, yes, it does. They they are they do exist, uh, but this doesn't really help too much because it just kind of adds to the kerf the kerfuffle. Um, when I'm trying to micro my units out, I have all of these colors and stuff going on. Yes, it does help my clarity. I know that those are the bad guys, and I am the good guys in my you know in in my engagement engagement. Having six purple rings around them doesn't exactly help. 
Um, I know where the enemy and the opponent is because typically they're already swinging at me. I need better clarity for when I select my unit next to my opponent's unit, I select my unit instead of theirs. Um, there's a few times when I was actually streaming where I actually noticed if you place two units side by side, and I mean like side by side, uh, you can almost drag on to half of the other unit before you will uh, like get both units together. So if you're trying to select, like if you're trying to do a click drag in a combat so that you can pull two units out or one unit out, sometimes you pull that second unit, sometimes you don't. Redesign the unit life bars. Yes, it's beautiful, it's fantastic, it matches your color, there's nice little bars. Uh, still haven't really figured out which each block means, I'm assuming that it means it's about 5 health per block. Um, but it's, it is very, very beautiful, and actually, if you, um, if you weren't, you know, if you couldn't tell already, uh, the, the War Chief and the Berserker and the Shield Maiden uh, each have a little star next to their health to help you identify in the giant kerfluffle of an engagement where your uh, War Chief is. And it actually is very nice because, again, when you have about 13 or 14 different life bars moving around at one point, uh, knowing which one is your War Chief, if you didn't already have it on a, mi uh, a micro key, just looking for that star, it actually does help quite a lot. There are now three different stats for each unit. Before patch, it was health points and resistance were combined into only one stat. So essentially, this is saying um, it split the life bars and now you have attack, uh, attack, health points, and resistance. Uh, so the warrior, for example, has 10 damage, 5 resistance, and 50 health, uh, which is actually, I believe, the exact same as a draugr. I'm, I'd have to check because I'm not exactly certain about that one. Um, but this is, this is actually really nice, because now you know, uh, Shield Bearers, I believe, have 7, and then once you give them uh, their bonus, they have, an, I think, an, an extra 3. So upgraded, they have 10 resistance, plus their um, health and the 6 damage that they do. So it, it helps kind of just understand what it means by just resistance, right? So I now know I have 50 HP on my Warriors, plus the 5 resistance. So if I send it out to go attack a Wolf, which has, uh, I believe it's 7 damage, 3 resistance, and 50 HP... I know I'm going to be able to kill it because it's a wolf anyways, but I, I can now kind of, you know, do the do the number crunching a little bit easier. Modica modif modification of unit upgrades. So the upgrading the training camp, shield bearer, and axe bearer camp now boosts the attack by 10% instead of defense. This was actually really good. Um, this was... Uh, an, uh, an upgrade that I was really hoping they would switch the defense to attack because shield bears, they're tanky monsters already, and with the uh, plus three defense uh, from the the iron upgrade, they have ten, so it's it's strong enough. But giving them a little extra damage makes them all the scarier. And actually, we'll go over the uh, the best clan breakdown in a little bit. But bear is on the rise. I'll I'll leave it at that for now. Upgrading the watchtower will increase its health by 100%, 50 before the patch, and its attack power by 100, zero before the patch. So now, it does. If you have a regular tower, it does 10, 10, and then I believe it's. 75. I'm not accurate on the health, but it's 10 damage, 10 resistance, and um, plenty of health. Now, when you upgrade it, it does 20 damage, 20 resistance. It's 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 a beast. The tower is an absolute beast, and if you have it on any tile like near your your border, upgrade it. Upgrade it. It's so worth it. It's so dangerous now. The AI uh, now upgrades unit tools. It's unit tools. Cool. Um, in the tool upgrade tab, military units now have brand new abilities. Yes, uh, the warrior has a charge ability, which is adorable. Uh, the shield bearer, I believe, gets bonus resistance. Uh, shield bearer have yeah protect protection uh, against ranged units doubled and its resistance, and then axe throwers can throw slightly further. <laughs> um, so the warrior has a nice, cute little charge ability, which actually, when you get it, it's adorable. Um, the range is a joke, and for 20 iron, it really isn't worth it right now. Um, so he will gain 15 attack power and a charging ability. This ability will allow him to sprint towards his enemies. Uh, the range is really not much. Uh, so if you have a tile of about this big, right, and you attack onto a tile, you will engage them. But that's it. Uh, there's there's no stun. There's nothing. There's no real incentive after they charge. So like for example, um, in StarCraft, the 
Protoss units known as the Zealots would, were basically these melee tank uh, units that would get it, be granted a charge ability to get into closer quarters with any ranged unit. So because of their melee ability, they had very high attack power and the charge to help them close the distance. In this situation, all they have is the charge. Their attack power is still pretty good, but it isn't ramped up where you're like, oh crap, I'm getting charged by warriors, I better back up. No, I've, I've got shield bearers, it, it really doesn't matter to me. I, I, can, I can tank this damage, and then because I have the shield bearer upgrade, which gives me, uh, he will have protection against rain units, units attacks doubled, so, you know, if his resistance was 5, now it's 10, and his general resistance will be increased by 20. So again, that's the 3%. So if a warrior is hitting me for, what is it, like uh, 10 damage, and I have a 10 resistance, come at me, bro. You know, I've got <laughs> I've got shield bearers for days. Uh, so the, the shield bearer, and again, the bear clan itself has gotten a lot of kind of under the table buffs to the point where the warrior is pretty much useless. Uh, the, 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 the warrior is good for just general clearing tiles, but if you want to go murder someone, you want to take shield bearers and maybe some axe throwers, because why would you want a unit that's going to get charged in, get focused by the axe, uh, the axe throwers, and then, you know, any damage that they would deal gets put out against something that has, you know, 20% resistance anyways. Um, you know, this is, this, this, these upgrades in general were supposed to kind of be like a rock, paper, scissors thing. Now it feels like rock, shotgun with a shield, and, um thing that throws paper mache you know so uh the axe thrower <laughs> the axe thrower now uh will have will gain 30 percent in range and attack power so uh it throws slightly farther and it does slightly more damage against a unit that already has its resistance against ranged units doubled so just let that let that kind of sink in and think about that. So, um, and we'll actually talk about a little bit in a second the goats and how they they stack into this. So if I go axe throwers and I get the upgrade right, and I see that I'm going to go and attack a a wolf clan, and typically the wolf clan likes to get axe throwers because the berserker used to be the tank boss, but we'll talk about that in a second. And oh wait, no, the wolf went mass shield bearers and he went for the resistance upgrade. And because he's the wolf, the shield bears also have bonus damage, anyways. And because they, he has the, you know, the he put in. Uh, this is all, by the way. Um, all of these upgrades cost you ten iron. Ten, not five. Ten. So if you wanted a war chief, you're gonna have to pay two war chiefs for allowing your your warriors to go slightly faster and hit slightly harder. I, again, shield bearer upgrade, that's, that's pretty good. It's actually kind of worth it. Um, or you can get slightly more range and slightly more power. Um, so, uh, so the Goat Clan. The Goat Clan has this wonderful thing called two free tools. And you could spend the two free tools to get fishermen, uh, hunters, healers, if you're feeling extra spooky. Or... Come on, drag, please. I'm trying to be... I'm trying to show... Strength. Or you can just casually dodge 20 iron. Just kind of, just, nope, I don't have to pay that. I got two free upgrades. Uh, yeah, the, the goat still has the ability where he can pretty much buy this out. And though it, it, it would basically cost any normal human being 20 iron, it's free for the goats. So they get a, a free shield bearer and a free axe thrower upgrade. And it's, it's dangerous. It's honestly dangerous. When you see a goat coming at you and it's got a bunch of shield bearers and axe throwers, you better head for the hills, man, because you're not, com you're not ready for it. So, uh, again, the so going on to the military unit modifications, the Berserker has been uh, nerfed, the health has been reduced by 30%, and its defense has been increased by 30%, so essentially, I believe he used to have, I think it was like 150 health, uh, it's, no, no, he had 100, he had to have had a flat 100, because it's now 75, so, no, it's, it's, it's gotta be 70, he had, a, he had 100 health, now it's 70. Uh, and his defense has been increased by 30, so he's still a tank boss. I mean, he can still run in, take take a couple shots, and then, you know, back out after uh, everything's dead. Uh, but he's just kind of slightly weaker. I mean, he can still hit you for 48, so, like, what are you going to do about it anyways? Uh, this won't change anything in the balance of the game. The modification only obje uh, objective is to show, to make the code smoother. Yeah, so it's just, it's, again, it's, nothing's, nothing's changed, really. Shield Maiden's defense has been increased by 7%. Cool. All the more reason to main uh, to main bear now. 
the armored bear's defense has been raised by 20% and its health by 7%. Um, this was, I think, to incentivize players to try and go out and colonize more um, or use the bear to go out and colonize more. I personally don't use the bear until I get that plus 15% bonus for uh, just having the bear and the shield maiden around and basically I just plop them on my farm tile and I just forget about them, honestly. Um, the, the bear... Right now, because they have the shield bear. I mean, seriously, let, let's talk about this. All right, you've got you've got a clan that already gets shield bears f cheaper, and gets bonuses for having military units. You have basically kind of under the table made a slight, a very scary wolf. Except this time, it's called the bear. Uh, so the axe thrower's base attack has been reduced by 15%, and their base range is reduced by 30. So uh, this was kind of to help give these guys a reason to make them cost 10 iron. So now the thing that was supposed to kill the thing that was supposed to kill the shield bearers is even weaker, uh, because axe throwers are just going to get nerfed into oblivion until someone realizes that they are absolutely useless. So the shield bearers' arrows' resistibility is reduced from 50 to 20. Um, Making ranged units. I think I hear more music. What is that? Oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Don't want the. Don't want uh, YouTube copyright to come at me. <laughs> I can't fight that. Oh, the mercenaries. The mercenaries. The mercenaries. The mercenaries. So, you want to talk about a really weak clan? Let's talk about the Raven for just a half a second here, okay? So right off the bat, the neutral tiles will murder you, okay? That's just a way of life in this new patch. The um, the wolves are dangerous. The Draugr are even worse. I watched a cat got again. I got to cast a couple matches between uh, two of the beta testers, and it was kind of funny to watch some of the warriors die to Draugrs because the Draugrs now have a ranged unit which can spawn and will snipe running away units. It's honestly terrifying. But now we get to the Raven. So. If the raven doesn't spawn with at least three food tiles and one more to colonize to, they will starve and die. They are useless. Raven clan currently, if you want to talk about just straight mat equal skill versus equal skill, if you have one player going goat, bear, wolf, or stag, and you have the other play player going raven, you are going to lose. Their food game is a joke, their resource gain is a joke, and their mercenaries are even more of a joke. Actually, just yesterday, we calculated how much the uh, the mercenaries cost in comparison to actually having viable military units. So um, it's a total of 280, okay? So get out your handy dandy calculators for this one. So it's 280 for four, because as you can see, sending mercenaries will now summon up to four units, Ooh, uh, which essentially are unupgraded Vikings, okay? Which, by the way, if anyone has a pair of eyes that is looking at or scouting, they'll see that you have enough fame to start sending mercenaries. They will just get a tower, upgrade it, and then laugh as you throw 280 gold at them. Alright, so each mercenary costs you about 70 gold. Just off the top. Off the top, 70 gold. Okay. Which then gives you, their attack was increased by 10% because now they hit for 10, and the defense has been reduced by 55, so that they're basically warriors. Alright, so for 70 gold, so 30 plus 35 plus 40, well, that's 140, uh, 30 plus 35, there we go. So we get 65. So if you want one mercenary, all right, and this is, this is idiot math because I had to do it on my calculator, you can get two actual units that will run around, you can control, and won't get thrown into a tower and die for cheaper than one mercenary, right? And if you want to go, and we can go into the 280, I think you can get about, it was either uh, five or six actual military units for the same price as the four mercenaries. Which, by the way, they will only give you like plus, it, I mean, in the last patch, we got to see how much they the numbers were for actually raiding a tile which has food, iron, stone, and whatever. It's not worth it. 280 gold. That's almost 300 gold for four units that attack one random tile by the shore. Okay, it's just, it's not worth it. 
PvE unit modifications. The wolf attack has been raised by 15%. The wolf also attacks much more often. It's scary. It's honestly scary. Uh, bear defense has been increased by 20% and its health by 7%. Uh, typically speaking, you, you want to have like a shield bearer and two axe throwers or two warriors and two axe throwers. You basically need to have three to four units to kill a bear now unless you have a war chief, berserker, or shield maiden. Big, big, capitalized, big changes on draugers. Their health has been raised by 20%, and there are now three types of draugers. You have the melee draugger, the spear draugger, and the shield draugger. Melee draugger runs up to you, smacks you with a sword, makes sense. Spear draugger does the exact same uh, damage as a regular draugger, except they throw spears now. It's, again, it's terrifying, I know. And the shield draugger is basically like a shield bear. Uh, it has a 20% resistance against axe throwers and tower arrows. Because, again, it's a shield bearer. <laughs> Valkyries. Oh my god, you want to talk? Alright. If you're in a multiplayer game, right, and you attack the Gates of Helheim, and you control it and win off the Gates of Helheim, you are a better person than I think most people. In any multiplayer match, you don't touch the Valkyries anymore. They are, they are demons. They are absolute demons. Um, their attack is now, I believe, 18 or 19. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. Defense has been raised. I believe they have, like, 85 health now. Or, their health is 85, and their defense is, I think it's, uh, 11 or 12. Okay. It's absolutely insane. And then you stack, you know, 6 or 7 on, on them on one tile. Call it the Gates of Helheim, and then, you know, have one or two of them spawn every two months. Evil. <laughs> evil. Absolutely evil. It's... It's, it's insane trying uh, to even think about taking the Gates of Helheim now. So, other modification. Uh, the wood production bonus has been dropped by t uh, cut in half, essentially. It's fine. Um, I, I typically now, what I like to do with my uh, woodcutter's lodges, if I see that my base has a force to expand to, I, will actually, I actually kind of like to keep my woodcutter's lodge on my home tile until I get to the woodcutter's lodge or the, the four, I can put a woodcutter's lodge on the forest, I'll upgrade the forest one, and then depending on how my economy is going, I'll either move all of them onto that tile, like say I'm not playing the goat and I can only, up, you know, I can only send in three. I actually kind of like to have the second woodcutter's lodge, just because when I'm upgrading, I need so much wood that I just, you know, I like to have the extra one just to kind of help speed up the upgrade process and then go out and be more aggressive uh, with all the new upgrades. Lore production was also cut in half, Okay, you know, um, <clears throat> again, it's the the game has uh, slowed down quite a lot. So uh, there's been quite a few games now where I'm playing from around 803 to 804 instead of 802 to 803. Uh, so the the game has slowed down quite a lot, but it's actually for the better. It feels like I'm not getting uh, wolf rush nearly as much. There's definitely a lot more, you know, 10 or 15 unit attacks or confrontations. Uh, but that's good. There's more combat. There's more things to talk about when uh, things are uh, doing that. Killing the Wyrm now grants 250 to every ally on the team. Very good. Like it. Uh, very nice. Young and Proud and Gear upgrades now have precise descriptions. So now I know how much uh, happiness I need for actual uh, military bonus. That's good. Uh, played a game as the Stag and we'll get to each clan in a little bit. Uh, it is now... Oh, goodness. I just lost my place. Ah, there we go. It is now possible to upgrade a tool if the building of the unit is built, even if there are no units. So basically what this is saying is if you have a healing hut and you have five whopping iron and you want to upgrade the healers, you don't need to run a villager to the tile, get a healer, upgrade the healer, and then send the villager back. You can just upgrade the healing, uh, you can upgrade the healer units, even if you don't have a unit. Uh, you just need to have the building. So if I don't have any warriors, I can't upgrade the warrior uh, unit until I have a bear, uh, training camp, excuse me. Better repartition, which I had to look it up because that's such a fancy word, uh, basically means division, better division of resources surrounding the landing site. Yeah, actually, um, I've noticed that in pretty much all the games I played in the beta, uh, you will always have at least two food tiles or three. Uh, there's always a standard two, there's always typically a third. Um, there's been one or two where I've had allies that just don't spawn with any, and I think that's just kind of straight up to RNG, um, which obviously needs to get fixed, because if I have my three food tiles, my ally doesn't, and my two opponents have the three food tiles, there's obviously a major discrepancy there. 
Tiles containing stone and iron mines surrounding the player's landing site will now be less difficult to colonize. No bear or jogger to defend them. Good. Now if only I wouldn't have to try and clear the iron or stone on my two food tile, on the uh, two space food tile, so I can drop my food silo. <laughs> um, there still are a few tiles where I will, you know, there'll be like a two space deer tile with an iron vein or a stone vein on it. So it's like, okay, I get the deer and then I have to get the stone and then I can uh, get my, my food silo and then I can drop amenities as the goat and then I can get, you know, so on and so forth. Players in multiplayer games now won't have more than three pauses available, and each one of them has a 45 second time limit. So, get out our handy dandy calculator, 45 times 3, you have a whopping 135 seconds to either get in or get out of that game uh, before you simply have to play the game. Which, good, I think this is a great choice. Um, this definitely stops people from just pausing the game and walking off and having, you know, dinner or something and just kind of leaving you stuck there to either concede or draw. I, I think that's, that's very good to see. This one is pretty much what I like to call the wolf killer. Uh, scouts are not allowed to scout enemy territory, other player or AI, uh, unless the scout camp is, hang on, unless the scout camp is upgraded. So essentially what this is saying is... If I'm, if I'm playing in a 1v1, I cannot scout into my opponent's base until I have gotten 10 stone for my town hall and 5 stone for my scout village and then upgraded the scout uh, hut, which is, I believe it takes 50 gold, 50 wood, and the 5 iron, or 5 stone, excuse me, to upgrade, and then I can scout to his base. So, and there's been a few cases, uh, if I get lucky and spawn next to a Draugr tomb and I get an early berserker, I'm like, yo, you know, let's, let's go, let's go, it's 802, I've got what I need. I still can't go and kill them until I've scouted his base, obviously. And I, to do that, I need the 10 stone and the 5 stone for the upgraded uh, scout lodge, which, again, it slows down the game, but for the better. For the, so much for the better, because now I'm playing the game instead of wondering, gee, I wonder, uh, is it going to be spring of 801 or 802, or is it going to be winter of 802 that I get wolf rushed? You know, it's now an actual, let's play the game out and come at me bro you know it, it feels so much uh so much better bug fixing two players should not be able to spawn next to each other good that should have been an assumed the repair of a watchtower stops when it is attacked but not when enemy units enter the area so essentially what this is saying um if my if my watchtower is on fire and i send a villager to go repair it uh an army comes in to try and attack my tile until they attack the physical tower itself, I will continue to repair that tower, which I see that as being a very, very dangerous line to tread. And my reasoning for that is if I'm pushing into a tile, right, and I smack the tower once to set it on fire, and then I'm, I'm dealing with the, the guy on the tile, the, the tile, the, the tile, excuse me, and then I see this one lowly villager come up and start smacking the tower, and he sets the tower back to full HP after, like, trying to scrunge this tower to death. And now I'm dealing with its army. Now there's another full HP tower I have to kill, right? And especially if that's upgraded, that thing is not going to die. Achievement issues should now be fixed. Yay! So, um, that, was, that was pretty much everything I had for that. Um, a few things I wanted to go over before we jumped into the... Uh, hang on, let me write out the... Wolf, Stag, and Raven. All right, cool. Um, before we walked into the the Q and A from Shiro Games itself, I wanted to go over the currently the most strongest to the weakest um, clans, and I wanted to kind of go over each clan and how they feel in the current environment in the closed beta. So, the strongest clan, in my opinion, right now is Goat. The reason for that. Um, is because it used to be when you did a 2v2, you always had to have a wolf, and then you would always want to pick a goat as that support class. Now it's reversed. Now you always want to have a goat, and you kind of want a, a wolf support class, or actually a bear support class, because of that, that damage output and that damage potential with the shield bearers. Um, I, I really do feel like the, the wolf has dropped down to probably the third strongest clan because of the bear's strength. Uh, so, in terms of the environment that the, the goat is playing in, 
Um, I, I feel like there's, you know, there is stone, but there isn't enough. Uh, there's there's occasionally stone quarries that you can, you know, go in and get like the 45 stone, and then with mining efficiency, it, it's really nice. Uh, but it feels like there isn't enough stone for me to really, you know, partition out what, uh, what things I want upgraded compared to what things I really need upgraded. Like, I always have to get a healer's hut, and so I always get an upgraded healer hut because I, you know, the wounded units are, are a plenty in, in the new environment. Um, you know, my, my farmer's lodge, my brewery, these are things that are always essential, but I also need to upgrade my, my house, my scout lodge, you know, there's a lot of things that I really need to upgrade that are mandatory as the goat clan, especially if I'm, if I'm feasting for my allies that I need to get, and without the stone, I can't do that. <clears throat> Second clan, the bear, for obvious reasons, um, the modification, so the bonus for the shield bear is seriously is one of the strongest things that the bear could have gotten and easily launches them. If we're going off a of straight military, the bear is the strongest clan. If we're going for all around efficiency, I still think a goat, but the bear is now a very close contender because the bases will always have the three food. And that was kind of one of the biggest things that the bear struggled with in the, in the current and not the beta, um, setting. Uh, hang on. I think the music cut out. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. There we go. Um, what, you know, that's one of the, the things that the bear struggled on. Now that they have this food, they can be much more aggressive. And you'll we'll, you'll probably see in your statistics of how each clan is doing, you'll probably see a, a very sharp increase in bear wins in comparison to wolf wins. Because the wolf has been essentially neutered in terms of damage potential compared to a very cheap and aggressive bear. Wolf, for the third strongest clan. They can still go out, you know, uh, clear tiles, they can still expand, and they can still kind of um, be generally aggressive, but they can't kill, you know, if um, if they want to go out and go for a rush, all it takes now is seriously probably four units from each of the, if it's a 2v2, right, One's a, one is a goat wolf versus a bear wolf, and the wolf decides to try and rush the uh, enemy team at 802 whatever, all the other team has to do now is get their bear, get their four units on each side, and they can easily overwhelm the, the, the wolf like it's nothing. They can easily, easily get two shield bears on each side. The bear would probably have four because of, again, the, the what we discussed earlier. The goat has probably the four axe throwers, and they just go to town. They just go to town on this wolf. The wolf really doesn't have uh, the lethality that they, they used to. They have their harassment. Don't get me wrong. They definitely have their harassment capability, but they don't have the lethality that they used to. The bear really is the one carrying the dagger around in the five clans now. Uh, I put the stag as the fourth because they're kind of just there. Uh, there really isn't anything too notable for the stag to, to mention. Uh, their upgrades are good. Their fame is good. But it doesn't wow me, you know? When I want a clan that I, I know is going to do well, I pick the the goat, I pick the bear. If I really want to be crazy and edgy, I pick the wolf. I don't pick the stag because it doesn't have anything that really motivates me to pick them. You know, when I want to go bear, I'm going bear because I have, I have the cheaper shield bears. I have a bear that can give me plus 15% on a food tile, you know? If I'm going goat... When I get an upgrade and then I get industrious, I can put four villagers on a food tile and really skyrocket up my economy. Uh, with a stag, I have eradication, which gives me happiness on a, for food silos. Okay, you know, there's there, there needs to be more. I need to see more from the stag if I want to play them. And right now, when I have two other clans that are so much stronger in general compared to the stack, I'm, I'm, I want to play the stronger clans, you know, that it, it the, the game incentivizes me to play the better clan, and the stag is good, but it's average, when it needs to be exceptional, you know, and then the raven, I've already torn them a new one, um, but like I said, in, in this new environment where, uh, especially on hard difficulty, and wolves are constantly attacking you, and droggers are constantly attacking you, the raven's economy in, in the current patch is frail. In this, it doesn't exist. Um, if you're playing with the raven, if you're in a 3v3, and hopefully one of your allies is a bear or a wolf, you need one of those, you know, one of one of your allies to sit in your base and guard you until you can get mercenaries, and then pray to God that they don't scout you, or that they realize you have 500 fame. 
because you can't do a D-Day landing where you can just send in, you know, tons and tons and waves of mercenaries and just flood their main tile because you don't have the damage output, you know? You have a better chance of creating and physically running an army to their base than mercenarying them. Um, so they probably have some sort of damage potential, but if you're going for what the Raven is known for, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to do really much of anything with them. So that r wraps up the patch notes, September 2017 closed beta. Um, and by the way, oh, by the way, this is, uh, I guess a general invitation because I know I've talked to the, uh, development staff and they are still looking for beta testers. I will leave the discord link down below. If you are interested in becoming a beta tester, um, I am pretty much always in the Discord. Message me, give me your Steam ID, um, just so that the developers can check to make sure that you do play the game and that you do have quite a few hours in the game, so that we can guarantee that you know you're not just a 14-hour guy that just wants to come and enjoy the beta. Um, if you have some you know honest good feedback, if you have generally really good you know suggestions or a way that you can help improve the game as a whole. Come and talk to me. I can. I'll. Um, I'll hook you up with the right guys. Okay. I can't promise I can do that for everyone, but I'll try my best. So, Northguard combat update. So for for the test team, my name uh, Tile Dancing. Did you man? Did you did you manage to tile dance? You can, um, but it's much groggier. So basically, you know, instead of having you know just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you now kind of really need to space your units out, and you can still kind of tile dance but it's much much slower uh do you think the 0.8 seconds cooldown is enough yes is it not enough it's plenty um again talking about the equal armies going in and trying to kill each other that 0.8 seconds is a very big window of opportunity uh to deal out a lot of damage that you normally wouldn't be able to get to unit selection do you think the combats do you think do you think the combats are clearer than before yes and no I think the health bars that were implemented are a fantastic um, uh, addition, as well as the box with the extra health uh, to help me identify units. Uh, but in terms of general scrumming, when my armies, when my army goes to attack another army, it's still a giant mess. Of okay, hang on, there's my unit. Oh, thanks to whoever followed. Um, you know, when one person is attacking, I need to figure out which unit that is, and then I click on what I think is my 10 HP warrior, and it's the shield maiden that's currently mauling his face in. You know, I and then I'm like, sh you know, crap, 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 select, 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 get out, get out, and then he's dead. Uh, you, uh, the multiple unit selection, do you like the way the selection in a unit group is designed? Yeah, it's, it's very nice, it's very clear, and I think that it's a great addition. Watchtower buff, do you think the changes were a good thing? Yes, as much as I think that the tower is probably on a little on the stronger side, and it's, we'll probably see a lot more towers in the game, making the game probably a little longer than it should be, I think that this uh, was a great incentive for players to A, build towers, and B, keep pissing on the raven, basically. Unit upgrade modification. Do you think the new military upgrade through the tool panel is a good thing? Yes, but it's very expensive. Um, and my, my answer was two war chiefs or one faster warrior. Essentially what I'm getting at with the response is I could have two warriors or in, if I was a wolf, two berserkers or my warriors could run slightly faster. Massive, massive damage. Well, hang on. There we go. Massive damage potential, slightly faster warriors. You know, um, it's, it's a pretty clear, um, it's, it's pretty clear which way I'm going to lean, especially in a multiplayer game where having just a war chief or a berserker in general can easily tip the moral side, tip the moral scales of who's going to stay in the fight or who's going to die. The warrior, do you think the changes made on the warrior, especially the charge ability, are useful? No. Um, I think if you want to make the warrior dangerous with the charge ability, you need to give it either a 2 second stun, and I mean 2 second, like a 0.5 second stun, so when they charge into a unit, there is a, a delay of when the other unit can attack, or you need to make it so that the charge is, is just, you need to make the charge more viable, you need to make it worth my time to put 2 war, war chiefs equivalent of iron into making my warrior slightly faster. I think the shield bear upgrade is fantastic, 
but I also think that the axe throwers and the warrior uh, equivalent is very lackluster. Mer mercenaries, do you like their raid work? Made the raven even worse off. Less resistance, but plus one mercenary. Did bugger all, honestly. Um, a tower still kills them very, very quickly. And, oh, by the way, if they attack through winter, they still take the winter debuff. So if I send my warriors into winter, when, you know, it would, it would seem more viable, they will have minus three attached to them for damage. So they're hitting, like, even weaker warriors. They're hitting, like, wolves. You're, sen you're essentially spending 280 gold to send four wolves to attack their main base. It's so, it's so inefficient. What is the glo global feeling about the new environment? Too difficult? No. It is very, very, or too difficult? No, but it's very difficult. Um, you want towers, if you, if you, if you see a wolf den with six wolves, you know, four or five tiles away from your main base, and you don't plan to ever take it, drop a tower. Drop a tower, because as soon as you go to attack a, a, an opponent's base, Four wolves are going to walk in. They're going to be like, what are you going to do about me, man? You're across the entire, you know, the entire map, and I'm back here pissing you off. What are you going to do about it? And it is it is very annoying and very difficult. How is clan balancing? As I said before, um, I do believe if we're looking at just a general global economy, I do think the GOAT is strongest. Uh, but if you're talking about military potential and damage output, I do think that the bear is the strongest clan. Um... So let me let me phrase this uh, another another way. If I'm playing single player, I think that goat is the strongest. If I'm playing multiplayer, I think the bear is the strongest. You know, just like the wolf used to be the strongest clan, be not because of their their farming ability, but because of their damage output and their lethality. The wolf is oh hang on I got the um, elite Sara Dukar. I murdered your name, but hey, <laughs> notifications are cool, right? Um. I, I, I seriously do think that the, the bear has the lethality to be incredibly dangerous now, and we will probably see a lot more bear players because of it. And I don't mean that, that in a bad way. I think it's good to see, you know, more clan diversity in multiplayer matches, but there's a reason it's called a meta, because unless you're an incredibly skilled player, basically everyone in their mom is going to play the clan that is generally better than the other clans, you know? I can be an amazing raven player that can kill everybody, but I'm still going to always be running into bear, goats, and, and wolves instead of other raven players. You know, there's a reason for it. So, um, that's really it for me, guys. I I had a fantastic time um, doing this closed beta. And, I, again, I really uh, thank Shiro Games for this opportunity. It was, it was a blast. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and I do hope that uh, what I've at least given to both you guys and the development team um, has been of, of use. Um, and with that, I hope you guys have a good day, good afternoon, good night. Uh, I hope everything that I added was useful, and I will see you guys later. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.